Good evening, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. I thought I'd film this quick video um, in kind of my follow-up to a couple videos I've posted lately. Um, shorts, actually, of uh, a couple different ammo selection, weighing them really quick. And the reason I did that was, um, it's one, actually one of the number one questions I get is, um, do I weigh my ammo? Do I sort my ammo? What do I do? Uh, to prepare ammo for matches, that sort of thing. And the short answer is no, I don't. I do not weigh or sort my ammo, and I'll give you my thoughts on why. Um, I did extensively test ammo in this way many years ago, weighing, sorting, rim thickness, the whole nine yards, and I found, um, not surprisingly, the more you spend on ammo, the better quality ammo. You don't need to do that. So, um, if you watch those shorts, you'll see that something like an SK flat nose basic, which is priced slightly more than this, basically from the five rounds I, I weighed had a zero uh, grain discrepancy. They were all weighed the same. Whereas there is a difference with something like this, CCI standard velocity. So, my feeling is that if you want to take, <clears throat> excuse me, a cheap ammo and weight sort it, you are not necessarily going to get the same results out of a quality pre-sorted ammo like, you know, an SK, for example. Now, having said that, when I did extensive ammo testing, can you take bulk ammunition, weigh it, rim thickness sort it, and turn it into match ammunition? Nope. <laughs> Don't even waste your time. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'll tell you that right now. <clears throat> Pardon me. So it's kind of an important thing to consider that these things are experiments that you can read about online and so many other people including myself have done testings for you if you want to you know take our word for it great if not you want to try it by yourself sure do that too it's a fun experiment to do now i will say that if you take a box of cci standard velocity and you weight sort it on average so there's five boxes here you'll find some weight discrepancies Will those eliminate flyers? In some cases, yes. But overall, not as much as you think. Um, and it's pretty easy to test because, you know, everybody has their own method. I'm going to show you my method right here. Just a quick method. Um, everybody has their own method of doing this. Um, this is kind of my method that I refined, you know, over the years of doing it. I used to weigh bricks out in front of the television and I would lay Dixie cups out and I would, you know, put rounds in and I would shoot that. So I'm going to focus more on this in this video about like if I was going to sort some rounds for a match upcoming match which is you know roughly 100 rounds 50 for the 50 yard and 40 for the 100 yards so I'll take you guys through that now quickly say you don't need very much for this you only need a couple things to make your life easier and I'm not going to touch on what equipment you think would work best um, I found over the years the best thing to use when sorting ammo is a piece of plain Newsprint, so the kind of stuff they use for packing boxes. Um, you can use newspaper, you could use even, you know, white paper, but it's nice to have a clean, large white surface like this. Now, I used to do this in the, in the living room of the, <laughs> watching TV at the coffee table after the kids went to bed. So one of the advantages of having a sheet like this is you can just clean it all up afterwards and, and get rid of it so it doesn't harm anything because when you're dealing with lead, right, you don't want to run your kids' toys and stuff, so... That's kind of my advice for you. These are really handy. These are by MTM there. They're um, like their uh, ammo holders, you know. So you can carry like and then sort them. They're really good because you have, you can space them out for matches. So like for me, you can, you know, sort them out for your groups, for your 50 and 100. So they're good to have with some spare ammo. So I'll show you how, like, if you're going to sort it for a match, these are really handy um, for this sort of thing. If you're going to if you're going to sort like a brick of 500, you'd obviously need a, a couple of these. The um, CCI standard velocity and the 100 round plastic containers make great sorters because you can sort them. I traditionally sort by group, so I'm not looking to, you know, have a box all the same weight. I'm looking to keep all the weight consistent per group. And there reaches a point where you have to make a determination on where your carryover is, as you'll see in a second. So the first thing I do, and like 
don't get me wrong, I'm not going to sit here and weigh 500 rounds for you guys. So get yourself a quality scale. And, you know, this is, I think I picked this up on Amazon if I remember. It doesn't really matter where you get it. Um, the cool thing about this one, and I would recommend that you get a weight that's calibratable so you can easily calibrate this if you need to. So I've already done this before at the start of this video and I've got a set of grains, okay? So I'll kind of show you, also it should be on a level flat surface. You can see when I move the scale, it adjusts, right? Based on where it is. So sometimes you need to give it a go again based on this new location, okay? It's important to have a, a scale on a flat level surface. I'll get that in view here. Okay, so I'll kind of take you through when I used to weigh things, how I learned to do it. So you open up a fresh box of ammo and really you're looking for, you want to keep the ammo that's all the same within the same amount of grams together, but you don't know what they are yet. So you have to start a pattern on what they are. So basically I dump them out like that. You need yourself a Sharpie and you can use post-it notes too. One of the advantages of using like this plain newsprint. All right. So we start a pattern here. So that's 51. And so I start a little pile and then I write 51, okay? And so I keep them all together in that pile for the 51s. Another 51, same pile. 51 again. And this is what I mean about weight sorting is I think if anything, you'll find a better, you'll find a better like odds from or better success rate from rims uh, sorting these days. I think, uh, you know, weight sorting was more, so here's a, ooh, that's, see, that's 50.8, okay? So in my world, you're a 0.2 grain difference. Is that gonna cause an issue? I don't know, right? So we're not sure yet. So we have 51 in this pile, so let's make a 50.8 on that pile over here, okay? And that's why the new sprint's kind of handy or the plain paper, whatever you choose to use. 51 and like I used to sort 500 rounds watching an hour TV show you get into kind of like a system And I'll tell you some of my 51 I'll tell you some of my experiments or my results And then sometimes you'll get them where that was kind of like on 51.2 there or whatever so no so it weighs out good Oh, so like there you go 50.6 50.8 so we're back at this one you see how there's a relationship here you know we got like 10 rounds at 51 exactly and then 50.8 over here so that's important because what will happen is I, I consider everything in groups so you know like the saying they, they say where you know there look at that one 51.2 oh I got a little slope in my, my paper But you'll see the majority of them are 51. And then sometimes, not so much in, in, in CCI standard velocity, but, you know, some of the, like, probably what I should have picked for this would be something like that Winchester. There's another one. Uh, um see like you check a couple of times and like I've even known guys to, to give it a quick shake um that Winchester white box because like if you would see the results of that you'd be like holy discrepancies and it's like when you weight sort Winchester white box into being all the weight category then you figure it'll shoot like CCS you know standard velocity or blazer or something a little bit better quality but it doesn't I find if you're going to weight sort and spend the time to do it so that's, look at that one, 51.4. So this is where it gets interesting, right? Because sometimes you'll get a flyer that's drastic. So is, if you're shooting 50.8 and you get a 51.4, is that gonna create a flyer? Well, <laughs> I could tell you the answer based on my testing and it might surprise you, but I would encourage you to try it for yourself and see. Um, because when I used to do this, I would save these and the ones that were really off I would keep as Fowlers and Ciders and that's really the thing to do I think if you're going to sort like 
a few hundred rounds like this, like, sorry, I bumped the camera there. Um, you can see I'm, I'm talking while I'm sorting 50 rounds, but it goes pretty quick, right? And, uh, you know, if you have something to do when you're, when you're doing it, I would say if I was going to sort, like I said, I use a hundred and sorry, I use 90 rounds for the match. I could sort that in under sort package, ready to go in under 10 minutes. See, look at that one. So we're at 50.6. So another different one. So that was even a low of 50 point. That's why I think, I think there is some merit, but you can see the vast majority of the box is, ev is evening out to be a certain weight. And so I think, you know, a lot of people say, well, okay, well, CCI green tag is sorted and rim thickness, CCI standard velocity. Um, I think there's a little bit more to it than that. I don't think it's just, hey, let's wait, sort these. And I think, you know, it's, it's a different, they know what lot numbers are more consistent, what brass is more consistent. And like, maybe not with CCI so much being a volume maker. Um, but like definitely if you're going to buy, like I've weighed SK Magazine before and SK Magazine is absolutely ballistically all over the place. Now, like I said, I used to do this uh, as an experiment and I used to think it was quite valuable uh, years ago. And then I learned that just buy better quality ammunition. Now, <laughs> I said that in the beginning a few times. This is what I'll say. Well, what happens if your gun, like let's say the Vickers that we're going through a process for, really like CCI standard velocity? And I don't mean like the Anschutz where I shot it as a project. The Anschutz shot it okay, but it wasn't its preferred ammo. But the Vickers, through my ammo testing, really like CCI standard velocity. Would you get a benefit from sorting it for that? Well, if this was your ammo of choice, yes, you would get a benefit because you're definitely eliminating variables here, which is what it is. Because the thing about it is, is you don't know what this weight is. Is the weight in the powder? Is the weight in the brass? If the weight's in the brass, it's not going to affect your flyers as much, in theory. Why? Because it's not part of the propellant and it's not part of the projectile. So yes, it does offer things like headspace and, you know, rim thickness and all sorts of things like that. But not as much so if it was powder or propellant. Sorry, propellant or object, you know what I mean? So that's where the differences is, are, rather. <laughs> so again, it would have some merit in that situation, but like I was at uh, uh, the last match, one of the practice sessions after, one of the fellows who placed higher than me was talking to me and he said, oh, you must sort your ammo too. And I said, no, I don't sort ammo anymore. Oh, what are you talking about? You know, I sort my ammo, maybe that's why I placed higher than you, ha ha ha. And I said, oh, okay, what, what ammo are you shooting? And he said, well, I'm shooting a SK long range match. Well, listen, <laughs> I've weight sorted SK long range match. And I'll tell you right now, it's not like this. Okay. So 50 rounds in a few minutes here, guys. And so what are we left with? Well, we're left with four rounds completely out of the spectrum, I would say. So two at 50.6 and two at 51.4. So the vast majority are 51 even. I would say we have like six rounds. No, okay, so we have five rounds of 50.8 and 51.2. Now, so what do we do in this scenario? Well, you can do a few things. I know some people will do another box and they will put them all that way. And you can absolutely do that. That works totally well because you're, you're shooting a match, for instance. But to speed things up for the purpose of this video, for example, this is what I would do. If I get this out here. All right. So this is the internal part, and I'm shooting five round groups for this match, right? So I would sort these per group like this, okay? Because when you shoot a match, you go like this and that, right, for my type of match. So then these are all weights sorted of the same weight. I would do the same with these. Now, it doesn't matter that they're different from those. They might matter in terms of 
um, like where, let's say technically where they would land on the on the target, but you don't know that if it's a, if it's a propellant or if it's the lead, you don't know. So you're keeping all the weights together. So all this group is going to be the same weight. All this group is going to be the same weight, and all these groups are going to be the same weight. These guys over here, the fifty point six and fifty one point four are Fowlers, ciders, whatever, what have you. But all these guys are all weight sorted to be the same. Because these were different, these were different, and then all these are going to be the same. And so that's how you'd sort for weight for something like this. Now, if you were doing multiple boxes, like, you know, like a whole um, match, like let's say I'm going to do here, okay, then you would do as many as you needed for the match. And if you ended up having more Fowlers than that, you would just crack another box and you would keep them consistent. Because it doesn't matter what these are. And like, let's say your next box has 51.6. You're not going to add the 51.4 to the 51.6. You could, if you were doing something with like a, a, a crazy amount of variances. Like I remember I used to sort and weigh one of my favorite ammos to do this to was, was Federal Auto Match uh, back in the day. It's harder to find here in Canada. I haven't seen it in a long time. But... I used to buy it by the, the case like crazy and I would sort it all and because I found it actually legitimately made a difference. And then you would sort it all and you, you would have literally like 10 different weights per mini brick. I guess there were 335 rounds or whatever they were, 325. Um, and, uh, you know, you'd have a lot of different numbers. Nowadays, I'm, I'm being totally serious, the numbers are much better. I don't, I don't have such discrepancies. So... You only have a couple of numbers here. The vast majority of them are, are 51. Okay? So we have a 0.4 and a, like a negative 4 from the largest amount. If you know what I mean. So these guys are 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and then we have 0.4. So are these going to be flyers? I don't know. So we're left with 5 rounds, which I would call, like obviously I would do another over here. Okay? To find out what I would call so far these guys the flyers or the ciders or the fowlers or whatever you want to call them. And then your next one, we would hope that we would probably have a similar thing. But anyway, that's how I sort for this sort of thing. And this is just with CCI standard velocity. If you were going to pick something cheaper, it would be different. And then if you wanted to get crazy, maybe in the next video, I'll touch on rim thickness sorting because once you rim thickness sorting which i believe is more valuable especially with match ammo because you can still rim thickness sort you can do that on top of weight sorting and then that's like a very interesting value value because sometimes you'll get better rim thickness and more consistent in different group ratios and that makes it all the more fun anyway i'm going to stop this one here just want to show you guys how i sort kind of a quick and dirty way paper is the way to go as far as i'm concerned get yourself one of these or hang on to those like the round holders from SK, those black plastic things, keep those and you can sort them. And then I've even flipped boxes inside out and retaped them. So they're white. And I, I write the white, the uh, weight value on them. You can do all sorts of things. These guys are a good investment for like 10 bucks because you know, they basically hold hundred rounds and you can weight sort. And if you're shooting for a match or if you're shooting single shot, you know, like hundred rounds will go a long way on one of these things and you can sort them and, but what I used to use was those CCI plastic boxes. You know, you buy your standard velocity, you sort them, and then you've got this big pile. I think I still have a big pile in the garage. But I've also used Dixie cups from the dollar store, right? You just, you know, the little ones you keep in the washroom there. You just fill them up with your particular little rounds. You put a little post-it note in each cup with the weight value. And you go to the range and you shoot those for groups if you're just target practicing. For a match, this is much easier because you know how it's laid out. So I know that that's my 50 yard group and these will be my 100 yard groups in, in groups of 10. Anyway, I thought I'd share that with you guys. Any questions, comments, let me know. Uh, but again, thanks a lot for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.